Let me get my notes out. <laughs> no, I could never really read those. I've been finding I've had a hard time knowing where to begin trying to talk about Greg to people since he died. There was so much about him that I truly valued. I just never knew where to start. It's also hard to speak in the past about someone who still feels so present. But I can tell you this. He would have been very happy with the snacks we're having later. <laughs> My wife Mary and I met him and Madeline when our West Suburban Chalice Circle formed 10 years ago. They were not yet members of this congregation, but they had attended the Unitarian Universalist Summer Assembly in Lake Geneva for many years. Shortly after joining the Chalice Circle, Madeline and Greg also joined the congregation. In our first Chalice Circle meeting, I was immediately drawn to Greg's quick wit and wry humor and touched by his tenderness and emotional authenticity. It was evident that Greg had a wealth of stories from his travels and his work. And when I say travels, I include his trips to Jewel and the post office. <laughs> it was equally clear how much he treasured the stories of each person he met. On a personal level, Greg was my closest friend, something that didn't really sink in until a day or so after his death because I hadn't had a closest friend like him for most of my adult life. I suppose that for both of us, it was like having a brother that neither of us grew up with, one with whom we got along. We also shared several men's retreats and a men's group for almost seven years, carpooling whenever possible. Greg and I were at our worship services here so often without our spouses that I imagined visitors and new members figured we were a couple. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. Because both of our work schedules were irregular and we lived so close to each other, we often had coffee together and confided in each other. We looked for opportunities to get together, such as movies, dinners, folk music concerts, and weekly Downton Abbey watching and debriefing. <laughs> Greg was an adopted uncle to our children, Kayla and Matthew, and he always treated them like family, at times better. He was sure to deliver... It, oops... Just a little of Greg's humor. <laughs> yeah. He's getting you back for bringing Yeah, he, he is, yes, I know. He's, I'll get you. <laughs> for 30 years, Greg was a motivational speaker, as you've heard. His specialty was hugs, humor, and hope. His business card credentials were MSW, Masters of Social Work, CSP, Certified Speaking Professionals, and PFG, PFG, pretty funny guy. <laughs> no one I know espoused the need for laughter more than he did. To know his roots is to understand what a long journey he made to get there. Greg proposed that everyone needs 25 good laughs a day to stay healthy. And that was before science began documenting the health benefits of laughter. He was sure to deliver at least that many during his presentations. I videotaped a couple of his talks and edited revisions to his demo tape, and it was a pleasure to watch him work. His presentations were interactive, and no one was safe. <laughs> it was usually the people in front, however, who participated by responding to his questions and helping him demonstrate the seven types of hugs. His gentle humor always broke the ice. Through his talks, Greg was able to do the thing he loved most in life, connect with others in a meaningful way. He needed to do this, and he wasn't happy if he wasn't connecting. As Kathy mentioned, over his career, he touched hundreds of thousands of people on a personal, emotional level. He could have a ballroom full of farmers or insurance actuaries hugging. As you might have seen in the slideshow, Greg had been on TV and radio. His books were endorsed by top sociologists and psychologists. And Madeline has drawers full of letters from audience members who expressed how he impacted them profoundly in just 60 or 90 minutes. 
and you'll hear a few of them later. But he always wanted to hear your story, and your story, and your story. Greg used his non-threatening humor as a means of connecting with people in his non-professional life as well, and this is one reason we had so much fun together. Like no one else in my life, he could persuade me to join him in activities that I'd never do myself. About five years ago, during the summer when some of our worship services are lay-led, Greg gave a service <clears throat> during part of which, the humor part, he wore a red foam rubber nose like this. And the slideshow has a photo from that day. On one beautiful day the following week, he thought it would be fun for the two of us to put on our noses and walk into his bank in downtown Elmhurst. <laughs> After agreeing that maybe that wouldn't be the kind of attention we wanted to attract, we decided to shift the venue to Starbucks Al Fresco area. We both enjoyed the smiles from passersby and didn't believe we had lost Starbucks any customers that day. The sermons here this month have been exploring what it means to have a sense of wonder. Greg was full of wonder, and I loved that part of him that was so in touch with his inner child. It's a challenge for us adults to honor and express that, you know, because sometimes it means being willing to appear silly and immature, like wearing a clown nose in public when you're not on your way to a birthday party. Greg's sense of wonder, I believe, was also revealed in his love of the choir here at Unity Temple. He was deeply moved by the beauty of many of Marty Swisher's music selections and our choir's powerful performances of them. And he loved sharing our choir with others. When they performed a best of concert, Greg enlisted our friend Corey Anderson to videotape it with him and me to edit it so that it could be posted to YouTube. I was happy to share that sense of wonder with him. I strive to be more like Greg ever since our first Chalice Circle meeting. Just by being himself, he brought out my inner extrovert and helped me see what rewards can come to me and to others from extending myself, often in a humorous way, more than I might be comfortable with. His favorite quote, and one with which he ended his talks, was by Leo Rostin. It's on the back page of your program and also on the yellow hope cards you received when you entered. But I'd like to read it for you. I cannot believe that the purpose of life is simply to be happy. I believe that the purpose of life is to be useful, to be responsible, to be compassionate. It is, above all, to matter, to count, to stand for something to have made some difference that you lived at all. This was like a mission statement for Greg, and he lived it every day. No one I know spread more love, kindness, and compassion. He was entertaining, touching, instructive, insightful, challenging, very generous, and of course, funny. He was a gift the world has lost and can hardly afford to be without.